When you tell kids you need to go to school and learn, that really doesn't have a lot of impact in many because they don't see the carryover from those words. But when you can when you can shape that in the form of history, when you can talk about how we got to be to public education and why we got to public education and who was excluded from that process and who was included, all of a sudden the kids get it. And all of a sudden, being in those classrooms makes sense to them. I grew up not far from here, a place called San Pedro. Um, and it was a housing project, a household of six brothers. I was the third to the youngest. My oldest brother was uh, was academically astute. He was very smart. Uh, as a matter of fact, I modeled my life after him. Um, I learned a lot from him. He was a leader in the community and uh, many of his peers always sought advice from him. He was someone that when they spoke, people listened to him. Uh, and he had one, I think, thing going over all of his peers. He understood and appreciated learning. I can remember a teacher who came to the projects where I lived to tell my mother I should go to college. And this teacher was Caucasian. For him to come to the projects, which was not good for, for, for if you weren't African-American, but he did it anyway. And that made such an impact on me. One of my teachers who was part of my master's degree work asked me what, what was my next step? What, what did I want to do next? I said, I'm going to get a administrative credential. And he said, well, why go sideways? Why don't you just get a doctorate? And I had no conceptual idea of what that was. And he was an alumnus of Claremont. So he said, I've, I've got people at Claremont. Why don't you go up and talk to these people? I didn't have stellar grades uh, early on in the undergraduate work, but my grades in the graduate work were good. They were kind of hesitant about admitting me. So they, they gave me a, a, a sort of a con conditional admission. And in that conditional admission, they said, if you do well, we'll re reconsider. As I was getting my class schedule from my advisor, Dr. Weirs, he said, you know, Felton, you got a master's degree in business. Peter Drucker is right across the hall. Why don't you take a class from him? I walked over, and sure enough, he was there. There was a huge line waiting to sign into his class. It stretched around the building. I mean, everybody was trying to get into his class. I got in the line, and I got up to the table, and he looks up at me and says, So, you want to take my class, young man? I says, Yeah. Are you prepared to do the work? I said, Yeah. Very well, okay. So he... He signed me in. I got an A from him, and I got an A uh, in another class, and then I got full acceptance for the doctorate program. Um, so a lot of good things begin to happen for me at Claremont. Strategic planning, the stuff that I, I learned under Drucker, when I got here, there was no strategic plan. And being on the Council of the Great City Schools that represent 72 of the nation's largest urban school districts, and being able to have that as a sounding board in addition to this has really helped me put that word out. I just did a presentation three weeks ago in San Diego on ethnic studies. I talked about its impact because it does just that. It allows different cultures to look at one another in a way they've never looked at each other before. 
to see the values in those cultures that they never thought of because of the lenses that they grow up in. And those lenses are tainted with racism. I spent a lot of time going back through the pros and cons on it before I opened my mouth. And I reflect on it very heavily. If I approach it from this way, if I approach it from that way, which is the best way to make this happen? Who in that room does not want to hear this? Who do I have to convince? But if it's something that I think is going to have a far-reaching impact, I'm not going to let it go. The bigger proposition is providing an opportunity and an environment for kids to become themselves, to grow intellectually, to be able to feel comfortable about who they are and to be able to make a contribution. That's in my head. I've got grandkids out there that I want to see have those opportunities. I think you got to be in the environment and you got to get feedback from the environment to know what's, what's effective and what's working. We need to be able to understand the issues, look at our response to those issues in terms of curriculum, get people prepared, and then being able to get that feedback, have that, that continuing updating about the effectiveness of the programs. Because these issues are here, and because these issues are part of the people that you work with, that you bring into CGU, um, I think it's a perfect mix for looking at what works and what does not work. This country is a little more than 400 years old and it's trying to figure itself out. Which way does it go? Does it go forward? and embracing its diversity and its values, or does it go backwards in trying to relive the past? That's the question that has to be answered for all of America. Which way is it choosing to go, forward or backwards?